1698 a.m. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my main man, Charles Thomas, sitting there. Charles, you know, you, you, you. We just had a little fire. Little fire. Thing with fire. Kill yeah, she was good, man. She but brought you, it. You she know, brought but it. Charles, you know, you put that. No, I'm just. You, you, know, you said, I want some names. I want names. You want receipts. I want receipts. <laughs> I want names. That's one thing we've been doing here for the past several months. How long have we been on the air together now? Oh, two months, three months, almost two, yeah, three months. we've been calling people out by name, man, and that's, I mean, it, it hadn't helped the guest Get roster. Get the champ to call us. <laughs> it, it, I don't know. Uh, you know, it hasn't helped the guest champ. roster you know, too much Maybe because a lot of them to don't want to come in, even though they have very public names. I well, mean, they be they calling out us out, They call, but you know they talk about Ooh. the show because they have their events, and then they say, oh, that morning show that's spewing misinformation. I'm saying, come on come in, on, champ. Come on, get us the right information. Come on in, champ. We want to talk to you. <laughs> Excuse me, Brother Turek. <laughs> yes, so, sir. ladies and gentlemen, we are now <laughs> we are now talking to our next challenger for the commentators, Brother Ture Muhammad. Ture, give us a short introduction. Man, of course. You said my name is Tori Muhammad. I am a journalist and a content, digital content strategist. Man, my goal in life is just to create dope content that informs, educates, and empowers the black community. So, go ahead. Man, I've had some great opportunities to interview people, man, like yourself, like um, Queen Latifah, like Ice-T, Chuck D., Minister Louis Farrakhan, and so many others. And now it is such a great opportunity to bring that experience that I have, man, to try to continue to inform and empower. All right, well, let's hear your commentary. Let's go, Sonia. The black community is in a state of emergency. We know the problems created by racism and self-hatred, but so many are confused about the solution. It's that same tired hate song. Look at all the trash in the streets. Somebody needs to pick that stuff up. Whose job is it anyway? You hear them on social media. We need more money, jobs, resources, and help in our community. What are the politicians, celebrities, and preachers doing? Mayor Rahm should be doing woo, woo, woo. Chance the Rapper needs to blah, blah, blah. Mr. Farrakhan needs to hammer, hammer, hammer. Yeah, I get it. When you see someone with power and influence well beyond yours, you start counting their pockets, brainstorming about what they should be doing with their money, time, and resources. But here's the thing. Forget about trying to figure out what others should be doing. You came out of the womb of a woman just like them. Shout out to all the black people in the community doing something. It's a bunch of organizations, businesses, and artists doing what's right. They are creating jobs, opportunity, putting resources, time, money, and energy into the community. They are doing. What are you doing? Get off the sidelines. It's time we made black America great. Get self-knowledge. Become a mentor. Start a business. Buy black. Put the interests of yourself and your community first. Pick up the trash. Dang. Did you say pick up the trash? <laughs> pick up, pick the, up trash. the trash, man. Talk to me. So, Torrey, what was your motivation? Well, look, you know, I love how you on the front lines making sure that from outside organizations and politicians that we get, we make sure we understand what's in it for black people. Right. But some of those people that want something out of everything else don't put enough of their self into it. They're not fighting. They're not standing up. They're waiting for something to come to them. So I want to help encourage them with that uh, commentary to just get up and start doing something. Too many of us on the sidelines. We need all hands on deck right now fighting to get what is good for our community going. Well, you know what? So I'm, I'm, you, I'm feeling that, Toure. But, you know, being a commentator is not a one, one and done. Mm-hmm. Being a commentator is 52 weeks in the year, scraping your mind for content, trying to motivate you, 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 I know you had time to practice that one. What you got when it ain't nothing? What you, can you freestyle for us? Give Man, me some. I, I can freestyle and come off the cuff with some things that are absolutely important for our hit people. Hit me, baby. Hit me. So let me tell you this. The tale of the hunt will always glorify the hunter. And in black Chicago, we need important, powerful media to stand up against myths and stereotypes that are fighting to push us down on a continuous basis. 
There's a report that came out of Georgetown a few weeks ago that talked about how black girls are being adultified at a very young age. At 5 to 14 years old, they are being considered and looked at as little adults. So the problem with that is that when you look at what um, is happening to these girls in the school system, they are being penalized far worse and far faster than their uh, male counterparts and their female counterparts. When you look at, I'm talking about of other races, the white and the uh, black, fe- the white female, the white male. Now, when you look at mentorship, there are less opportunities for them to get mentored because they're being adultified. And people say, oh, they don't need any help. They already got it. These young girls already have what it takes. Now, when you look at what happened in different parts of the country, when you have a police officer putting their back into the shoulders of a little black girl in a bathing suit, it's because he saw her as a grown woman that needed to be controlled as opposed to a little girl. It is time now for the Lions to get pins and we write our own history. Ladies and gentlemen. Mm. Uh Uh-oh. Now, check this out. He didn't have no papers. <laughs> he didn't have no papers, Charles. That's key. That's key. That's key. But look, let me ask you something, Tori. Yes, sir. What happens when the politicians and the powers that be step to you? Because when you're on WBON, it's different than being on a digital website. They react. Like, for real. Say here. They come to you. It's the same question Mays asked Mr. Goen. What you going to do when they step to you, when they come to you? I'm talking about these Negro politicians. And when they cut your money. Listen, I come from the east side of Chicago, 78 in exchange. There's no fear. I see those men and those women as just what they are, men and women. So if they don't have the power to call a gnat, if a gnat takes a morsel of their food, they ain't got no power over me. I love the metaphor. You know what did you say in that? See, you know what, brother? Yeah, I see. We got to wipe the spittle from our people's eyes. We don't see trees. If you're going to be a commentator, you cannot see trees. You got to see men. Minister Farrakhan dropped that one on me. He said, Brother Mays, wipe that spittle from your eyes. See men, not trees. Toure, that gnat. I like that. Ladies and gentlemen, Toure Muhammad, he is fighting to be one of our commentators on the Talk of Chicago 1690. Give him one more round of applause. (laughs) Toure, stay tuned in all week. Share the broadcast because we are going to make a decision, and you'll find out if you are the commentator on Friday because you'll be with us at the Taste of Chicago, I mean, Taste of VON. Ladies and gentlemen, on, you, you are tuned in to the Talk of Chicago 1690 AM, and we got to check out Black Chicago Eats Month. The entire Tourette. month, yes, sir. Save your appetite to August. <laughs> and we expect you to be advertising on WVON, too. Ladies and gentlemen, you are tuned Absolutely. in to the Talk of Chicago 1690 AM. I am your host, Maze Jackson, my man Charles Thomas in the studio. When we come back, Brendan Schiller to discuss with us police brutality. How it plays out in Chicago and where does the money go? Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be back after these messages. The talk.